Welcome back. We have officially passed the quarter mark of the 2023-24 OHL regular season. And uh, we're going to take a look at the power rankings at this point in the season. I can tell you right off the hop, we have a new number one team on the power rankings. A few big movers and a few teams that kind of kept the status quo this week. So let's dive right into it. Number 20 on the power rankings, it's the Niagara Ice Dogs. It was a rough week. They went 0-3, and, and they also started the week with a trade with the London Knights, their third trade since the Labor Day long weekend with the Knights. And uh, they picked up Brody Crane in a trade uh, for Chris O'Flaherty and Picks. And then the following day, after they had lost to the Sudbury Wolves, they decided to make a change behind the bench as uh, they let Ryan Kuabara go after that 7-2 loss on home ice. And uh, Ben Boudreaux is now behind the bench for Niagara. And that coaching change is the fourth this season. I can't remember a time where we've had four coaching changes in the first quarter of the Ontario Hockey League season. But Niagara is the latest. And uh, for Crane, who just came over from London, he registered two assists in the loss to Brantford. That was their second game of a 3-3. Three and three. And just the Niagara Ice Dogs... Uh, it's just been a tough, tough go of late. They did. It was a close game against Sault Ste. Marie to wrap up the weekend. They lost with just 10 seconds left on the clock. The game was tied. Looked like it was going to overtime, uh, but the Sioux Greyhounds had other plans. So it's a six-game losing streak right now for the Ice Dogs. They have a 3-3 three and three coming up this weekend, starting with Barry Thursday night. And then they go to Guelph before hosting the Saginaw Spirit. So it doesn't get any easier I'm sure this Ice Dogs team desperate to snap that losing streak, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So that's why right now they're sitting 20th in the power rankings. Coming in at number 19, down one spot, it's the Windsor Spitfires. They went 0-3, started with a 10-7 loss against the London Knights. Uh, Liam Greentree had a four-point night in that game. Joey Costanzo in net for nine of the 10 goals, the 10th one being an empty netter. Uh, that game just... No defense uh, whatsoever, all offense. At times, Windsor had a good lead. It looked like maybe they'd take it, but just the game just kept going back and forth. And in the end, the London Knights would uh, defeat Windsor. And then they had uh, a dramatic loss yesterday at home against the Saginaw Spirit. They lost with 10 seconds remaining. Very similar to what happened to the Niagara Ice Dogs. So the Windsor Spitfires uh, just struggling right now. They're on a five-game losing streak. They uh, do have another 3-3 three and three this weekend. Starting at home against the Owen Sound attack before a home and home with the red hot Kitchener Rangers. So it does not get any easier for Windsor. You have to think that they're going to view that game against Owen Sound as a must win to try and snap this winning, this losing streak before having to play uh, the Kitchener Rangers. So Windsor right now, number 19 in the power ranking. Coming in at number 18, it's the Frontenacs. They're down one spot. They went two and one, but one of those wins was in a shootout against the Oshawa Generals. Uh, they have Opened the weekend with a loss on the road against the Barry Colts before defeating Sarnia at home. Uh, Matthew Soto, he stood out this weekend. He uh, had five goals in those three games. So Matthew Soto getting things done for Kingston. Now, I think the Frontenacs, based on what we saw this weekend, if they can continue this, they're going to climb those standings uh, quite well. Uh, they do have a school day game coming up Wednesday in Ottawa before hosting Mississauga and Brantford. The Ottawa 67 is a really good team, so that's going to be a – Tough test to open the week, but for Kingston, you're starting to see signs that Troy Mann has this team heading in the right direction. Uh, but uh, Vakari, he has been standing tall, second in saves going into the weekend uh, overall in the Ontario Hockey League. So the Kingston Frontenacs, uh, potential, but we'll have to wait and see what happens in upcoming this week. Now the Brantford Bulldogs, they climbed two spots to number 17. I think we're starting to see the real Bulldogs. They went 2-0-1. I was at the game in Peterborough yesterday where the Bulldogs and Peets went head-to-head -to, -head to renew their rivalry, and that rivalry, is that's got a lot of fireworks, a lot of fun to watch. The Bulldogs, uh, they were ahead at times. Nick Lardis scored two goals in 10 seconds to start that second period, and I, I, I was just impressed with the way this Bulldogs team is playing right now. Uh, they've also picked up Thomas Hamara from Kitchener in a trade. He was a plus one in his two games. He's going to be pretty steady on the back end. I think the Bulldogs, they're starting to take shape. I would not be surprised to see the Bulldogs climb the Eastern Conference standings and ultimately the power rankings. They have uh, three games this weekend. They host the Sarnia Sting Wednesday night before traveling to Ottawa and Kingston this weekend. 
Number 16, it's the Owen Sound Attack. They're down one spot. They went 0-2-1. They couldn't pull the lead late in that game against the London Knights and then ended up losing in overtime. And then in the game against Mississauga Saturday, they were down 4 nothing going to the third period. They just couldn't get anything going offensively. This team has been very inconsistent ever since the the, uh, the coaching change when Greg Walters was removed. It just seems like the team just... There's just a piece missing, and I, I'm figuring that, you know, for Rumble behind the bench, it's taking time to get those systems introduced. But when they do get those systems, I just hope it's not too late. I think this team still has a good foundation when you've got Denny Gore up front with Colby Barlow and then Carter George on the back end. I think this team has the pieces. It's just something is missing with this team. Uh, they do have, uh, they're on a four-game losing streak right now, and then they go on the road for three straight, starting Thursday in Windsor, and then making stops in Sarnia and Flint. So hopefully this Owen Sound attack team can turn it around, or they're going to continue falling uh, in the power rankings. Number 15, the Flint Firebirds, they're down two spots this week. They, they kind of cooled off a bit. They went one and two. They did get a big win in overtime, though, against the Erie Otters. Erie has been a really good team of late. Uh, Colson Petrie, he had the game winner in overtime in that game. Nolan Dan also had a good weekend, two goals, two assists over his last two games. So the, don't count out the Flint Firebirds now. Every team goes through their ups and downs. And right now, I think the Flint Firebirds just a little, you know, just maybe needing a bit of a boost to try and get back on track. But uh, they have a 3-3 a three and three on the road this weekend. It opens Friday in London. Uh, before taking on the Owen Sound attack and then going to Sarnia. So it's going to be a busy weekend for the Flint Firebirds. Coming in at number 14, the Erie Otters, no change. Same spot as last week. They went 1-0-1. Their one win was overtime against the Sudbury Wolves. And Sudbury, they were number one in the power rankings last week. So that's a huge win for the Otters. Spencer Sova, he was the hero in that game. Uh, the Otters, um, they... Right now, uh, they have gotten points in five straight games. They're one of the hottest teams in the Western Conference. Sam Alfano, he has been solid during that stretch. Points in all five of those games, two goals, four assists. So I really like what the Erie Otters are doing. They do have only two games this weekend. So a bit of a, a slower pace to the month of November for them schedule-wise. Uh, but they do take on the Saginaw Spirit and the London Knights. Those are two very big games for Erie. And we'll see what they can do down at the Erie Insurance Arena. Number 13, this is a big drop. It's the Sarnia Sting. They are down six spots. I feel like this is a bit of a correction week for them on the power rankings as they went one and three. Uh, the lone win was in a shootout. That was in Peterborough against the Peets. Uh, the Sting, they had a fantastic start to the season coming out of the preseason where they were one of the hottest teams. Um, but now just three wins in their last 10 games. So Sarnia uh, kind of... The wheels kind of fallen off the cart, and I need to find a way to put it back on. Uh, their lone bright spot, though, Nathan O'Mary. He scored his first career OHL goal in the game against the Ottawa 67s. And the Sting, they play three games this week, starting Wednesday in Brantford, and then home against Owen Sound and Flint. So we'll see if Sarnia can turn things around. But that's a Brantford team that's looking pretty good of late. Owen Sound, they need to turn things around. And then uh, the Flint Firebirds, uh, that's another dangerous team. So we'll wait and see what Sarnia can do to try and get back up into the top half of the power rankings. Number 12, the Saginaw Spirit. They are up four positions. I think they're starting their climb up the Western Conference standings right now. They've gone, they went 4-0 and last week, and they're riding a five-game winning streak. So the Mem Cup hosts, I think they're starting to show their true colors after a slow start to the regular season. Uh, last week, they were sitting ninth in the Western Conference, and with those four wins, they're now fifth in the West. So look out for the Saginaw spirit. Michael Misa, he was the hero last night, scoring the game winner with just 10 seconds left in the game against the Windsor Spitfires. Dean Lucas, he also had a four points in his last two games, three of those points coming in yesterday's game at the WFCU Center. Uh, the Saginaw spirit, though, a quieter week after playing four last week. Uh, two games on the road. They're going to travel to Erie and Niagara. Coming in at number 11, it's the Guelph Storm. No change. Another team that's been uh, standing pat. Uh, they went 1-1, one one, but were shut out 4 nothing on the road against the London Knights on Saturday. Uh, Guelph, they seem to be playing pretty average hockey right now. They're 5-5 five and five in their last 10. Braden Gillespie continues to play some strong uh, goaltending for this Guelph Storm team. 
Second in goals against at 2.37 and fifth in safe percentage at 920. So Gillespie continues to be a bright spot on this Guelph Storm team. They play London again Wednesday night at home uh, before taking on Niagara. And then they're in Barrie on Saturday. Coming in at number 10, another team not moving in the standings. It's the Oshawa Generals. I'm getting the sense Oshawa, they could be picking up the pace here. They went 1-1-1. One, one, and one. They split the home and home with the Ottawa 67s and then lost in a shootout against the Kingston Frontenacs. So they still got a point. But what was big in that Kingston game is that Callum Ritchie is back in the lineup from injury and in his uh, return had a goal and an assist. So the Oshawa Generals, they were dealing with a lot of injuries to start the regular season, but they're getting healthier. They picked up a Lockhart from Peterborough. Now you got Callum Ritchie back in the lineup. I think we're going to start to see the Oshawa Generals, as long as they stay healthy, knock on wood, I think Oshawa could be a threat in that East Division. Uh, they have only one game, though, this week, so it's going to be a lot of rest for them. They're going to be at home against the Peterborough Peets Sunday evening. Number nine on the power rankings, the Mississauga Steelheads. They are down four positions. Uh, they went one and one, snapping their three-game losing streak with a 5-2 win Saturday against the Owen Sound attack. Now, this is not a team thing. This is just something that stood out. But the game Friday night when they lost 3-1 at home to the Barry Colts, uh, all three stars were from the Steelheads. I know the three stars mean nothing, but it just I think it's a respect thing. When your team loses, give at least one of the stars to the opposing team that earned the victory, not all three to the team that lost. Um, I just wanted to make note of that. It just stood out to me because the three stars – I think sometimes we make a bigger deal than we should, but at the same time, it needs to be a respect thing. And I know all the teams have their, their ways of doing the three stars, but for Mississauga that night, I just, I had questions about why all three were members of the Mississauga Steelheads. But other than that, that game Friday night, it was very feisty. There were three fights in that game. Two instigators handed out to the Steelheads, Agnes McDonnell and William Eggleton. Mississauga right now, they are the most penalized team in the Ontario Hockey League with 283 penalty minutes. Second highest is London at 254. And if you're wondering, the least penalized team this year is Owen Sound at 148. So when you're in the box that much, you're, you're not going to get a rhythm. You're, you're going to be throwing off the pace of the game. The penalty kill for Mississauga has been pretty good this year, 81.3%. But still, you want to get that rhythm. You want all four lines moving. But if you're having to kill penalties all the time, the penalty killers are out there a lot. You know those guys are going to get exhausted, but uh, still. Mississauga, they snapped that losing streak, got back in the win column on Saturday. We'll see what they can do this weekend. They go to the East Division with a stop in Kingston and Ottawa. So we'll see what happens there for Mississauga. Number eight, the Peterborough Peaks. They are down two spots. They went 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Their one win was yesterday in overtime against the Brantford Bulldogs. Sam Maye getting the winner in that one. And I just loved how feisty that game was between the Peets and the Bulldogs. Seeing it in person, it was just a ton of fun. The Peets putting up those five goals. Something they haven't done often. The Peterborough Peets, they might be first in the East Division, but they are the lowest scoring team in the Ontario Hockey League. 46 goals for, uh, but uh, the second lowest in goals against, also a 46. Guelph, they are the uh, only team that's given up fewer goals in the Peets with 42. Uh, Liam Zuchka. Best save percentage right now in the Ontario Hockey League at 927. And uh, he will be relied on a lot to keep that pace if the Peterborough Peets are going to hold on to top spot in that East Division. They do have a lot of talent on that team. So I would expect the goal scoring to pick up a bit. But at the same time, you got to be impressed with the way the Peterborough Peets are playing. Not putting up a lot of goals, but still holding on to top spot in that East Division. So the Peets, they play three on the road this weekend. They're in North Bay Thursday, Sudbury Friday, and then in Oshawa on Sunday. Coming in at number seven, we have the Ottawa 67s. They're up two spots. The 67s, they went two and one, including a split in the home and home against the Oshawa Generals. Luca Pinelli, he just had his second hat trick of the season. Um, he had the hat trick against the Oshawa Generals, 15 goals also in the season, which puts him number two. Pinelli has been on a roll, and uh, they also he put up five points in the home and home against uh, the Oshawa Generals. So Luca Pinelli uh, playing really well right now. Henry Mews also returned from injury, which is a good uh, bright spot for the back end for the 67s. 
He also put up four, put up a goal and four assists in the three games this past week coming back from injury. So good news with Henry Muse. The next three games for Ottawa, all at home. They take on Kingston in the school day game before hosting Brantford and Mississauga. Number six, the Barry Colts are up six spots. Uh, I I almost wanted to change it just because I felt because I called the Barry Colts games, I didn't want to seem like favoritism here, but the Barry Colts, they are a Jekyll and Hyde team right now. They had a brutal road trip going 0-2 against Kingston and Ottawa, and then they come home this past weekend and sweep a 3-3, three three, which included tough opponents like Mississauga and North Bay and a rematch with the Kingston Frontenac. So with their three-game winning streak and the, ta- the teams they played against to earn those wins, Propped them up quite a bit in the power rankings. And then teams like Sarnia dropping off uh, resulted in the Colts moving up. So that's how it is. And I think for next week, if they end up losing two in a row like they did the week before, don't be surprised if they fall again six spots or something similar to that. Uh, A bright spot, though, Shamar Moses scored his first career OHL goal in the game against Kingston and then recorded uh, three goals in total over the uh, three and three uh, weekend For the Colts, Sam Hillebrandt, also sensational over the weekend. He had the two wins. Now fourth in save percentage at 923 and fourth in goals against at 246. Uh, Hillebrandt uh, looking fantastic between the pipes. Uh, So we'll have to wait and see if the Colts can continue that trend. They do have a game on the road in Niagara Thursday night, and then they're back home at the Sadlin Arena to face the Guelph Storm on Saturday. Number five in the power rankings, the North Bay Battalion. They are down one spot. Uh, the troops, they went one and one with a big win at home against the Sioux Greyhounds and then fell short in Barry. Penalties were an issue for the battalion in that game against the Barry Colts, along with the turnovers. Uh, Charlie Robertson, he was also shaken up near the end of the game Saturday against the Colts. Cole Bogwen fell on his blocker hand and it looked like he was having a lot of issues with it, but decided to finish the game. Um, so keep an eye on Charlie Robertson. No word, though on if he'll miss any time or what's going to be in that situation. Because North Bay, remember, still missing Dom DiVincentis, their starting goaltender. He is uh, week to week with a lower body injury. Uh, So Robertson will have to stay healthy because uh, goaltending depth already being tested enough. Uh, They don't want to be testing that any further in North Bay. So the Battalion, they do have three games this week, starting with the Peets Thursday night. And they head to Sault Ste. Marie before returning home to face the Sudbury Wolves. Coming in at number four on the power ranking, it's the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. They are down one spot. It was not the greatest of weeks for them. They went one and two, and all three of those games were on the road. Uh, They barely took the game in Niagara. They uh, needed Connor Clattenburg to score the game winner with 10 seconds left on the clock. Uh, So that one was in dramatic fashion. And then the other losses were against North Bay and the Kitchener Rangers. And that was a tough contest against Kitchener last night at the odd you're at the end of a road trip, and you're playing the Rangers, who are right now the top team in the Ontario Hockey League, um, but uh, falling short there. But still, very entertaining between those two teams. Uh, for the Sioux Greyhounds this week, they only have two games. They play the Sudbury Wolves Wednesday night and then the North Bay Battalion, and those are two teams that are playing really well. So <laughs> the schedule doesn't get any easier right now if you're a Sioux Greyhounds fan. At number three, the London Knights, they're up Five spots. You know with this lineup, they'd be back in the top three at some point. Uh, They went 3-0 over the week, although the 10-7 win over the Windsor Spitfires was a little concerning. And then they needed overtime to beat the Owen Sound Attack 5-4. So some question marks with this London team defensively. We know they've got the the high-flying offense, but um, it's the keeping the pucks out of the net, uh, which is probably a concern right now for Dale Hunter and the coaching staff and something I'm sure they'll want to work on. But Denver Barkey, he is riding a seven-game point streak right now, fourth in points in the Ontario Hockey League with 26. Well, Casper Holtonen, he's now fourth in goals with 14. So the Knights' offense, as I mentioned, uh, really starting to show now in the overall leaderboard when it comes to the Ontario Hockey League. The Knights, they do play three this week, starting in Guelph Wednesday, and then they're home to Flint before traveling to Erie. So that's going to be a big game down at the Erie Insurance Arena between the Knights and the Otters. Number two, the Sudbury Wolves. They have fallen out of that top spot. They're down one. You, I kind of figured the Sudbury Wolves going into their three-game road trip. I know it was a three and three. I figured they would get at least two wins, but uh, they ended up going one, one, and one. They lost in Erie in overtime. 
And then they were shut out 4 0 by the Brantford Bulldogs. So a very disappointing end of the road trip. The first game was in Niagara. In that game, Landon McCallum, he was suspended two games for a slew foot. Um, so since that was at the start of the trip, you almost wonder, did that kind of disrupt the flow with the team? Uh, they did have Jabril Toure back from injury, which is great because he's a beast on the back end for the Sudbury Wolves. Uh, so it's nice to see Toure back. But you got to wonder, Landon McCallum, did that factor into the games in Erie and Brantford? I don't know. It could be a coaching thing. It could be, uh, you know, maybe an illness injuries either way it's kind of surprising to see uh, the Sudbury Wolves go one one and one on that road trip uh, through uh, southern Ontario and Pennsylvania and number one the Kitchener Rangers up one spot can anyone slow this team down right now at the start of the year a lot of people predicted that Kitchener would be a bubble team maybe make the playoffs likely not that's what the predictions were at the start of the year but right now, they're high-flying. 3-0 and this past week, including back-to-back shutouts for Jackson Parsons against the Owen Sound attack and the Peterborough Peets. And then the big statement win at the odd against the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Top three in points all come from the Rangers. Carson Rakoff leads the way. Hunter Brustevich and Matthew Sopp. And Rakoff also leading the league in goals with 19. He's almost at the 20-goal mark, and we're only a quarter of the way through the season. And the Rangers also have the most goals for with 91. So with the way things are going, do they hit 100 goals this upcoming week? Because they do play a home-and-home home with the Windsor Spitfires. And, of course, the Spitfires, the bottom of the Ontario Hockey League standings. Although, Windsor put up seven against London last week. And with the way the standings are, this could be a bit of a trap game for Windsor or for the Kitchener Rangers. Kitchener lost in Windsor last time they were there at the WFCU Center. So, We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure for uh, Hocus, the head coach for the Kitchener Rangers, wanting to keep the team focused on uh, the, the task at hand and not get caught up in the standings and take for granted where Windsor is. But either way, the Kitchener Rangers, they are the hottest team in the power rankings from the Ontario Hockey League. It's been uh, quite the run for them, and we'll see if they can continue this. So that's the power rankings for this week. Let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on the power rankings, surprises this past week, and uh, your thoughts going forward for some of these teams. Let me know down below, and uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And uh, it's been really encouraging seeing the growth on the channel. And if you want to be a part of the community, remember to hit subscribe as you'll get notifications as to the next video. Now that we're at the quarter mark, I'm also going to be working on a video looking at the top teams and their top scores. And we'll also be uh, doing an interview this week with a young member of the Barry Colts. That's all I'm going to give for a hint as uh, you can expect to see a notification about that video coming up in the next 24, 48 hours from the time I'm recording this. So again, thank you very much uh, for tuning in and we'll talk to you again soon.